it's 2023 and just to keep on trend with what I did in 2022, I'm going to introduce you to a range of really cool, mostly free tools as a designer, a web designer, content creator, whatever you are, these are tools you may find are going to be massively invaluable to you in 2023. So first up, we have Measure. Now, if you like to create these mesh gradients, which are Let's be honest about it, pretty popular right now. You may not really know where to start. Well, Measure by CSS Hero is a free tool that allows you to get creative with creating just that, your own mesh gradients. So as you can see, we've got a range of pre-built colors. We can click and drag any of these dots around and we can have those interact with all the different colors inside our color palette. We can hit the space bar to randomize things. You can see that'll give us a random option and we can go ahead, we can add, we can move around, we can just reposition any of these colors and stack them any way that we want. We can create background colors, we can favorite a palette, we can undo, redo, we can add more colors inside you. We can go ahead and we can open up the options on the bottom to create various different color options. So you can see we can adjust all the different parameters for any of the colors we have inside our design and create something totally unique. Or we can just go ahead and slap the randomize button and create something totally random for us. Once we're happy with it, we can simply go ahead and click the export option. And there we have all the CSS code that we need to create that. Now, obviously, this is from the CSS Hero peeps. So if you wanted to click and connect this up to CSS Hero, you could use those options. But you're just as easy to use it inside your page builder. Gutenberg, whatever tool you're using, even just down to the theme you're using. So if you grab that code, copy to a clipboard and use it where you need it. Now sticking with software developed by CSS Hero, and I promise you this is not sponsored, there's no affiliate link for this at all. If you want to check out CSS Hero Animator, this is a great way of being able to animate content on your website done in a visual fashion. Now I created a video on introducing you to this and I'll put that link in the description below so you can check the video out and you see a little bit more about how this all works. But if you want to add CSS animation into your design and you want to give it that sort of Apple-esque look, then you may want to check out CSS Hero's Animator plugin. Check it out, see what you think of it. I think it's pretty cool if you like the animation type things in your websites. Next on our list is Logo Ipsum. So if you're looking to prototype a design or create a mock-up or just get some inspiration for how a logo would sit inside a design, but you don't actually have a logo yet, you may want to check this out. This is just a range of placeholder logos you can use in your designs just to get you up and running with content in that top left-hand space inside your design. As you can see, there's an abundance of different types of logos from abstract shapes through to icons, through to more traditional logos to quite abstract looking shape logos. And if you want to, you can filter these down based upon the different types. So for example, you want circular, you can see there's our circular options. You want geometric, we can open the geometric shapes, and we again have a range of different logo types inside you. So once you find a logo you like, you may want to tweak it a little bit. Maybe it's not the right color scheme for you. Well, what you can do is you can jump into edit mode, and this then allows you to set the color. So for example, you may want something more orange. Well, we can drop that over into the orange spectrum. We can grab a color and you can see there's a range of different colors. We can use analogous, default, triad, split, complementary. You can kind of get inspiration based upon all those different kinds of options. And if you want to, you can just simply go ahead and shuffle the color to give you something totally random. But as you can see, all the logos update in real time as we make changes. So if we go back in and have this to be something like analogous, you'll see that updates things to keep in that kind of same range of colors, through the oranges through the browns through the dark black. If you want things like triad, you can see that'll give us a triad option. So you can customize the logos and then once you're happy, you can go ahead and you can download this in various different formats. We can go ahead, click to open this up and you can see we can grab the hot linking code for this. We can preview the logo. We can copy it as an SVG file. We can download it or we can go ahead and share it. So you've got an abundance of different options. It's a simple interface to use and it should give you more than enough to be able to work with prototyping designs with a mock-up logo in place. So this video is totally sponsored by, well, me my Figma to WordPress course. If you're looking for a very quick and easy way of getting to grips with using Figma from zero to hero to build your designs and then transition those over to Elemental, Bricks Builder, or Gutenberg using Generate Press and Generate Blocks, you may want to check out my course on Figma to WordPress.
Now sticking with images and logos and things like that, you may want to check out Sapiens. Now this is a purchasable option, but you do have access to a free palette of tools just to get started. And these, again, may be perfect for a project or just for placeholder if you like the style of this particular artwork. You can see we have an image of a girl cycling a bike. But if we take a look on the left-hand side, we can choose between walking, running, standing, or cycling. We can choose any of these. We can also change the gender between male and female. And what you can do is you can change the color palette from colorful to duotone to outline. So you have lots of modern different kinds of styles. But we're not just stuck there. Let's go back to the colorful option. And now if we come over to any of this, like for example, we can remix it. So if we click, we can change the head, the body, or the legs for various different kinds of styles. So you can change and you see we can go through a range of different head types different body types and different leg types. You can also go ahead and change the background. So you may want to have nothing in the background at all, or you've got a lighthouse, got some plants in an office kind of setup, sort of modern technology kind of thing with pop-ups and a Mac and things like that in the background. So there's a range of pretty cool little options you can use in here to get started. And again, even though we've changed the actual overall design, the background and so on, we can still switch this between the running mode, the standing or the cycling options. And then once we're happy with the final result, we can simply go ahead up to export. You can fill out and sign up. You just have to sign this up once. You can use a throwaway email if you want to. And then you can download this as an SVG or a PNG. And the nice thing about the SVG is all of the layers are intact. So you could then open this up in something like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer, and you can customize and tweak this to your heart's content, removing any elements you do or don't want. So even though this is a great starting point, you still have more flexibility after you've grabbed it. And if you want to purchase the full library, you can do that. It's not particularly expensive. It's $38. And this gives you in the range of something like three to 4,000 different combinations based upon the character builder, the thematic backgrounds, the different poses, styles, and so on. So if you like the style of this and you want more, maybe grab the paid for version. Otherwise, just use the free version and you have an abundance of really cool options to use. That's Sapiens. Check it out. Now we released a video yesterday covering this in a little bit more detail, but I wanted to include it because I think this is something that's really useful in 2023. If you use stock images inside your website, you may already be aware of Pixabay. Now, Pixabay is a royalty-free stock, stock image library, and you have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, and th you get the picture, of images you can use. So for example, let's go ahead and search for something. Let's go ahead and search for food. And as you can see, there's an abundance of pretty cool looking images inside here. So let's go ahead and say we like this one of the Apple. Let's select it. And now we can go ahead and we can download this if you want to. But if we click on the free download, we also have Retouch with Canva. Now you don't need to have a Canva account. You don't even need to have a Pixabay account. You can simply go ahead, click to open this up, as you can see, that now opens the image up inside Canva. If we take a look at the top, you can see I'm not signed in, so I've got no account set up on here whatsoever. This is totally free. So now I can go in and I have filters available to choose from a range of pre-designed filters, which I can adjust the intensity on to kind of get the exact effect that I want. I can also come into adjust, and this gives me full control of editing this brightness, contrast, saturation, vibrancy, all those kinds of things. So if you used to come from tools like Lightroom and things like that, a lot of these options are going to be familiar to you. Once you've tweaked all of this, you can also go ahead and grab this filter code, which allows you then to reproduce this exact same result just by simply copying and pasting that little bit of code at the bottom. You can also crop this, you can flip it, and you can also go ahead and animate it. And once you're happy and you're finished, you can go ahead, click on share and choose to download the edited image down to your hard drive and then use it as you need to. So it's pretty cool. We now have the option to not only pick images in Pixabay, but also edit them inside Canva without the need for an account or any additional software. 
Now jumping out of the creative side of things, let's take a little look at a plugin that I think you may want to check out if you want to get a bit more creative and you don't mind a little bit of code editing. And that is loops and logic. Now we all know that WordPress has a loop and it has logic. In other words, the loop is where you can see all of your posts, all of your products and so on. And the logic is where it queries and filters the information to show you exactly what you want. Well, this is a little plugin that's totally free that allows you to go ahead and use some very simple code up to more complex code to create your own custom loops using the loop and logic plugin. There's tons of different documentation options available, which gives you an abundance of information on how to get started right the way through to creating more advanced layouts and options. So this is a great way of tapping into that information, creating dynamic tags and linking through the dynamic info inside your WordPress plugin itself. This is a pretty cool little plugin. And if you want me to create a tutorial on how to use this, let me know in the comments section down below. I'll take a look at creating a kind of get started quick start guide to loops and logic. But check it out because I think this is one of those little plugins that's worth investing a little time in to learn and understand to give you a lot of creative freedom inside WordPress itself. Now, what kind of video moving into 2023 would this be if it didn't include some AI? And what's the AI topic of choice at the moment? It's got to be ChatGPT from OpenAI. I've been using this for the last couple of weeks, and I absolutely think it's a game changer for so many different uses. Now, the first thing people will always say is Google penalizes or is looking to penalize content created and written by AI. And that may well be the case. But let's be honest about it. There's plenty of use cases that don't rely upon SEO or search engine optimization or Google or anything like that to be involved. You could be creating written content, tutorials, guides. You may want to send out email marketing. You may want to send out mail shots. There's a million different use cases that you can just use this for to create really good, solid content. So all you need to do is create a free account and then log in like I've done, and then you can start into interacting with ChatGPT. This is great if you want to create a starting point for content, or if you're a little bit lonely and you want someone to talk to on those dark and cold evenings, then maybe ChatGPT could be your new best friend. I am, of course, joking. Anyway, so let's just say you want to ask it something. It's a conversational based AI tool. In other words, we don't need to worry about all strange parameters and code and things we need to put in, we can literally just ask it a question. So let's just say, for example, we want this to create a custom post site for WordPress. Sounds pretty complex, but we can get it to do it for us. So for example, create a custom post type for WordPress for books. Let's go ahead, click on enter or return, and this is now gonna go ahead and create the code for us. It'll tell us exactly how to do it, the steps we need to do, which is pretty cool. So we've got kind of tutorial element, and then we actually have the code being generated in real time to create that custom post type for us. Now this is probably a more advanced way of working, but you can use this for anything. You can ask it to create an email, you can ask it to answer questions, you can even ask it to create outlines for things like tutorials, video content, website, blog articles, whatever you want. So after a few minutes, you can see there's the full breakdown of exactly how to use this inside WordPress step by step, including all the code you need. That's probably a more advanced kind of way of working, but you can use this for pretty much anything you want. Let's say you want to create a blog and you want to create an, a blog outline for an article on canine dentistry. So you're not going to ask this to write it for you, you're just going to kind of ask it to give you a structure for it. And after a few moments, we now have an outline for a blog article on canine dentistry, broken down into various different sections. So now let's just say we actually wanted it to write some content for that. We wanted some more information about it. Let's copy that, and we'll just say expand upon and we'll ask that now to go ahead and write some more information. And this will now create more content-driven content over above the actual structure. So we can let that go ahead and finish doing what it needs to do. So there we go. We now have more information about the first point, which is the dental care. This leads me on now to my next tool. So let's just say we like the look of that and we're kind of curious, would this be flagged as AI content? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the plagiarism checker from Grammarly. Let's drop our content inside there, and we'll scan this for plagiarism. So as you can see, this has found some plagiarism. So we would want to go ahead and customize this content, which I would always recommend anyway. You don't want to take AI content and use it ad hoc. You want to use it as a starting point. And let's just say, though, you don't have a lot of time to be able to do that, and you still like to get some kind of rewording. You could use a tool like Quillbot. Now, Quillbot 
is a paid tool, but you can use the free version just to kind of get a feel for exactly how it works. And it may do more than enough for what you need. Again, no affiliate links to this. It's just ways of using AI written content and maybe tweaking it a little bit to get a little bit more fresh approach. It's a little less AI. So what we could do now is we can go ahead and paste that content in. Now we're only limited to a certain number of words. So you may need to set this up and do it in a couple of different goals. But what you can do is now, you can go ahead and ask it to paraphrase this information. And that's now gonna go ahead and take a look at the words that are being used and kind of paraphrase it to make it maybe a little bit more human and a little less AI generated. And then you can go ahead, run that through your plagiarism checker and find out exactly how good or bad this is. But like I say, this is a starting point, not a be all and end all. But as you can see, this comes back with a more sort of human-esque kind of way of writing it which is pretty cool. And like I say, this is the free version, so if you wanted more, then you may want to take a look at the premium or paid plans if you're going to create lots of blog content. But using these tools in conjunction with each other can open up a real ton of possibilities. And that's what I wanted to cover in this first video of 2023, covering an abundance of pretty cool, almost all free tools that allow you to get creative and expand what you can do with your designs. If you enjoyed these, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what tools you're excited to test out in 2023 with some links so I can take a look myself. All applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.